Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out my first video of violin tips and advice. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about probably my most requested or frequently asked question, and that is, what violin would I recommend, or how do you choose your first violin? This is such a tough topic for me to talk to you guys about because there are so many different variables that would influence the advice that I'd want to give you. So for example, whether you're an adult beginner, or you're a child beginner, or if you're you know, looking to get really serious about the violin, or if you're just playing casually for fun, what kind of budget do you have, all those kinds of things are definitely things that you need to consider when you're making this decision. Um, and for this video, I'm gonna just try and give you the most general information that I can that I think will help the most people. So for this video, I'm just going to assume that you guys are maybe adult beginners or maybe you're in your teens and you're just starting out and you're looking for your very first violin and you're just kind of looking to try it out for fun and just um, you know be casual with the violin. I think that one of the first things you need to consider is your budget. There are so many different prices of violins ranging from under $100 all the way to millions of dollars. And for a beginner, I think it's important not to just go with the cheapest thing you can find. I think if you are planning on spending any time with the violin and you're looking to get anything out of it, you need to invest a little bit of money into it because there's a lot of trashy instruments out there that are built really poorly. And what I mean by that is the pegs might be completely misaligned or drilled the wrong way and so if you're trying to tune the violin it might constantly come out of tune while you're trying to play. That's very frustrating and it's probably going to cause you to lose interest in playing really fast. So you want to invest in something that you can at least rely on when you're trying to practice with it and it's not going to keep you from reaching your goals. So you don't need to spend a ton of money. but you do need to be realistic and kind of, you know, that old saying, you get what you pay for. It's definitely true with an instrument like a violin. It's really hard for me to recommend to you a specific dollar amount because, again, there are so many different variables um, that determine the value of a violin. But for a beginner set, and that would include a violin, bow, and case, maybe some rosin, things like that too, I would recommend spending between $250 and $500. At that price point, you should be able to get something that is of a quality build that, you know, stays in tune pretty well, things are aligned properly, and, you know, it's not going to just split at the seams for you as soon as you start trying to play with it. So that's what I would personally recommend. Yes, you can definitely get instruments that are cheaper than that, and you might be able to even get an instrument that's cheaper than that that is still of a quality build. but. This is just kind of my general recommendation from what I've seen out there, what I've seen online from reviews of instruments, things like that. So that would be my recommendation. But that being said, a more expensive instrument is not always going to be a better instrument. So just like anything else that you want to buy, you know, a more expensive price tag doesn't necessarily mean higher quality or better. So always keep that in mind too. And the other thing you want to determine is whether or not you're able to actually go purchase your violin in person and try them out at a string shop or if you're going to have to buy it online. I would highly recommend going to an actual string shop and trying out all the violins in your price range if it's possible. but. I know that not everyone has access to a string shop near them, so online might be the only option. And that's not a bad thing, you can still get a really nice starter instrument online, but my personal recommendation would be to go to a shop if it's possible. In the shop, sometimes they offer rent to own programs, so it's kind of like you pay a weekly fee and you're building equity in the instrument and then eventually you own the instrument, so that's pretty cool. And then another perk about going in a shop is that you have professionals right there that can help you and give you more advice. Also, a lot of the shops will offer you programs where you can trade in your violin for the same value towards the purchase of a new violin. So if you ever get to the point where you want to upgrade that instrument, you can always trade in an old one. That's what I did when I was growing up. I always traded in my old violins at the same shop and then eventually upgraded to the really nice instrument that I have now. And you know, that was possible because I was able to trade back in those other violins for their full value. So that's a really nice perk. Also, you just get the satisfaction of trying everything out in person. You get to look at it firsthand and make sure that it looks like it's of a quality build, things like that. So 
I definitely recommend going in person if possible, but if not, then let's talk about what to do if you have to purchase an instrument online without being able to see it first. Definitely read as many reviews as you possibly can. I know there's a lot of stuff, especially on Amazon, there's a lot of starter kits and some of them have terrible reviews, some of them actually have some really good reviews too. So just read up on it, see what it says about a return policy just in case you do get something that's broken or poorly put together. Um, one thing to know if you do purchase a violin online, it'll oftentimes come, I don't want to say in pieces uh, because that would sound like it's broken, but it doesn't come fully assembled. So you have to put the bridge up yourself, the strings on maybe, things like that. So just be aware of that. That can kind of be a little bit daunting. And if you do have access to a string shop or something like that to take it in once you have purchased the violin, they can set it up properly for you there. But Again, that's another advantage of going in person to begin with because then the instruments are already set up properly too. 